and welcome to the Madison Saracen Factory Waiting Team podcast. Right now, we're waiting to go racing. I hope you're all well and making the best of this difficult situation. It's given us an opportunity to try something new, get creative, and uh, see where it takes us. Dan is a big fan of podcasts, so we said, why not? Let's give it a try. What could possibly go wrong? Well, as it turns out, everything. This is the second time we're trying to record. <laughs> Bear with us, and we'll give it a go. Uh, right, we've got in the room. We've got a uh, team today. We've got Danny Hart. Uh, Hello, everyone. Chris Mechanic, Scott Mears, um, Matt Walker, hey. uh, his mechanic, Ewan Collier, Chief Coach, Phil Dixon. Um, so here we are, locked down, having a chat, crazy times. Uh, anyone pick up any new hobbies? Well, I've been practicing my balancing on my, I, I got an indoor board off the internet. It's been quite cool to learn something different. I'll maybe take up some proper surfing in the in the future. And I've also been Zwifting, which has been quite cool. Um, I've got some elite rollers there, some smart rollers, so it's all linked up to Zwift, and it's actually quite addictive. So I used to take the mick out of Ewan a little bit because he's always on Zwift and never out riding. Ewan is a Zwift car, aren't you, Ewan? Yeah, Danny was giving me some stick and told him he should try it, and here he is. Yeah. I love it. You're a Zwift do up, are you, Ewan? Uh, changing your weight and stuff like you know, these things. Yeah, I always put my coffee weight in 45 kilograms. Ewan and his wife actually share Zwift accounts if, um, if my memory serves me rightly. <laughs> but whose weight's on it? We, work, we both weigh the same, so it's all right. <laughs> so for the past week, uh, we've asked you guys for your questions. First up, uh, Alex Keyes, race car driver. This is a question that came from Instagram for Danny. Uh, Max is related one, so we're straight in with the tech stuff. He says, why does Danny like the Minion DHR2 over the more popular Asagai tyre? He agrees with you. Uh, your insight on it, Danny, really? That's a good question. Um, I have tried the Asagai tyre a couple of times over the past couple of years, I guess, but I guess I'm just a creature of habit, and I just, I always have, I have two go-to tyres in the Maxis range, so that's the shorty for when it's, obviously really wet and muddy and also when it's really dry and really like deep dust so somewhere like Val de Sol and Andorra I've used the shorty in the dry before but um, when it comes to the DHR I just know what I'm getting with that tyre I've used it for a lot of years now and just a creature of habit it's just something I, I know the tyre and I think it's um, a faster rolling tyre than the, the Asagai because it's a little bit smaller so yeah, that's it really. It's faster rolling and just a bit of a creature of habit and uh, I like the DHRs. I think you've got a question for Scott next then, is that right? Yeah, that's right. I've got a question from our friend JP. He wants to know, Scott, how do you get so hench? What's the secret? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think I can give the legal answer to that, but we'll, we'll try. It's hard work, really. You've just got to knuckle down, eat well train hard and get your supplements in. We use a what few. What we just had for lunch, Scott? What was it? One of them green trees. Uh, pork pork pie salad. Pork pie salad. That's what it looks like. <laughs> what, what about for your hydration? What did you drink? <laughs> um, uh, most, I like, I like an electrolyte on the SIS. <laughs> 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 Get the, get, uh, get the nick taken over of the, of the uh, references I use for words. But, yeah. Is it al alcoholic electrolyte? Or? It might have a little. Not too bad. Just to help us sleep at night. That's it. <laughs> uh, I've got a question here for Ewan. Old Barnsley asks, well, he wants some tips off, uh, off you for keeping the bike running smooth and rattle free. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the same stuff that we use is, is pretty quiet anyway. Um, but yeah, our boys are hearing, hearing like bats, really. So the keeper's busy. We're trying to keep the bikes quiet. Um, I mean, we, we use slapper tape and, and Velcro on the chain stays and seat stays and um, just try and keep it rattle free, really. Any secrets from you? Uh, I mean, similar to like what you and CS obviously the, the Shimano running gear, it's really good. The, cl the clutch system on the mech that works really well. 
the frame's designed really well. The chain line stays quite straight with the chain stay, so you don't get a lot of noise from that. Um, one thing Danny does do, not so much noise from the frame or from the bike, but more noise from the ground. He uses a flat tyre defend in the rear. That dampens sort of the, the noise from the ground and also gives a little bit extra cushion on the tyre as well. He, he, he works really well with that and we've been using that all year last year. We got, on, we got on good with it. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, right, uh, Dixie, you're up. Got a question for you. Uh, James Mackey wants to know, how can you plan for this season now to, uh, to keep the boys in shape when we, I mean, we don't know when the first race is going to be or if we're going to have one at this stage. So how do you keep them in, uh, in the shape they were when they were ready to go at the beginning of March? That's uh, not an easy one to do, I shouldn't think. No, it's not an easy one. Uh, both the lads are really disappointed that the racing is, is off, as, as most of the athletes are. Um, they've had a really good winter, um, both in really, really good shape. So straight away we discussed how we can use this opportunity really positively to maintain the, the shape they've got and, and maybe work a few different areas. Uh, so I think one of the key things for an athlete in this situation is to have routine in the programme. So we created a, a basic week for the guys with six days training and one recovery day. Um, on each day, they've got two or three options of training for that day. So they're just not fixated on one thing, depending on how they feel. They can get outside once a day like the government regs in terms of um, getting some fresh air and, and getting a bike session done or a run session done. Or they can do an indoor session. They've both got gym stuff at the home, which they're invested in. They're, Danny has turned to Swift as a, as a new project and really enjoying that one and getting some riding in uh, on the Zwift. And, and Matt's actually took to running. So each day they've got two or three options. Um, generally they're doing three weeks on and then they're having a week where they can just uh, relax and, and really bank the work they've been doing and uh, away from that we just try and keep it really fun keep challenging with little games little little targets in terms of 5k times and running and just making sure they're keeping uh, that enthusiasm and they've got something to aim for each day cool. yeah how's that been for you two boys uh, how's that adaption been I know it's got to be a uh, really frustrating time for you just for everyone I'm sure but um, how's it been sort of making that adaption and trying to readjust your focus onto just staying in shape really rather than having a race to you know to focus at obviously when all the races started to get cancelled it, it wasn't so much for shock I think for a few weeks before the races actually got cancelled we could kind of see it come in um, but yeah I mean it's not been too bad I like to keep my head down and just keep working anyway so um, but like Dixie said it's nice to have a few little goals I'm working towards um and 20 well sub 20 minute 5k so just little goals and stuff to keep me interested and enjoy my training really yeah sounds good well done it gives them both the opportunity as well to do like matt's got a goal of sub 20 minute 5k that wouldn't normally be in the program now we'd normally be racing bikes so we've just looked left and right danny just completed a charity ride 100 kilometers two days ago on zwift again wouldn't normally do that we're just looking for different things and different challenges for the boys. This time has enabled me to potentially train a little bit harder and, and rest quite well because obviously you're not allowed to leave the house really. And if you do, it has to be essential. Whereas usually I'd maybe nip out here and there and go for a coffee with friends or do one thing or another. Whereas now it's just training and being in the house. So you're not really wasting wasting your time and wasting money and it's been quite good really right then matt you like a good racing question don't you yeah yeah bring it on really haven't got one for you <laughs> top question, no racing going on at the moment who would win in a madison saracen pub brawl so two weeks locked in his house and thomas is already feeling a bit punchy <laughs> <laughs> who's, walking uh, who's walking out who's walking out the play um, I don't know. Last man standing between between you, Will and Scott, I'd say. Oh, depending on how much each of you had drunk. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably be stone cold sober, so that's got to help my chances a little bit, just to get a, a slight right looking on Scotty before I run out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I might not be standing. I don't know whether it'll be off the drink or off getting things. <laughs> Scott <laughs> wouldn't want to muck his t-shirt though, so. Ah, He'd be stood up the whole time. Kick it off. He'd have his white jeans and his slip flops on. 
<laughs> yeah, we don't we don't really have a serious answer for you, but it wasn't a very serious question to be fair. So. Andy Player asks, this is for you, Will. How much input do our do your riders have on bike design? And the second part is what do you look for in sponsoring a rider? Okay, okay. Well, that's that's a really easy one. It's a big part of why we have the team really there. The mist is is basically the same bike that you can buy and we put a lot of energy into making it the best it can be for us to win races on and then of course to be able to put it in a box so people can buy it and pull out a, a world cup winning race bike so uh it's important for us to you know for you guys to be involved right at the very top level um making that bike as good as it can possibly be and then that filters through that's the saracen mist that you've always ride and then that filters down then everything that we adapt and change to make that the best it can be. That filters right through the range with the aerials and the, and the other bikes and the mantras. And it just, just gives us that edge really to, to make sure we're on, on top of the technology. So, and that's, that's quite similar actually. You think about it with the clothing, Madison clothing, everything that we ride and try out and race in is then adapted and, and made and made right for the, for the trail market. So just mm. everyone really that's involved with the bikes at Madison and, and the clothing is, um, it's just into what they do. They love bikes. They love riding. And I think that shines through really. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's cool to be a part of it all. And that's, that's a big part of why I like, you know, why, why I like being involved with the team. I've raced for a long time, but having the involvement with bike design and things like that, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's really cool to be a part of. Okay. Let's take a short break uh, from the questions. Just to let you know that the team's put a video out, which managed to get done just before the UK went into lockdown. Uh, feels like a long time ago now, but it's important to keep smiling in these difficult times. So, Check the video out, um, new bikes for 2020 and our new kit. I guess we'll have to wait a little while before we get a chance to ride it now, but uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, if you want to watch it, you can see it on our YouTube channel or find it pretty easily through the boys' social media accounts if you haven't seen it already. Okay, uh, Dixie, I've got a question for you, actually, before we get back to the, uh, to the other stuff. Um, obviously, at the moment, uh, one of the big things for, for everyone, not just bike riders, is staying you know, mentally positive and keep your, your mental well-being in shape um that's that's that can be quite difficult people have financial worries people have job worries um you know like tips for the boys and tips for everybody out there really what's a good way to to, to go about keeping yourself sane in this uh, in lockdown yeah so i think for the athletes one of the main things that's uh changed is the travel and kind of getting around and, and being able to get outside and ride the bike so they're not used to spending so much time indoors and we're not used to kind of not being in control of our own lives. So I think for athletes and families, create a routine. Routine is really going to look after you. Um, really going to provide a base so you can get the best out of your days. Um, limit news. I personally just looking at news and getting the roundup at the end of the day. Too much news. It's often quite a lot of negative stories in there. Really turn your focus to positive things. So set yourself little goals and might be a new sport, might be a new uh, hobby, might be a new um, project you've, you've got going. Um, away from that, I think try and exercise or get fresh air once a day. The athletes are all exercising. Uh, I think that's really important to uh, at dealing and helping you cope with anxiety and stress. Away from that, I think uh, my final thing would be speak to family, speak to friends, create team meetings like this one. And maybe, and I say definitely speak to fellow competitors and see how the, the situation is in different countries and, and kind of support each other as a team. Good. Okay, boys. Right, let's get back to some of these uh, questions we've had sent in. And then, Danny, have you got, I think you've got one there from Matt Haley. Yeah, Matt says, rate Bullhead out of 10 for his driveways. That's funny because Bullhead is Dave Wardell, an ex-racer who... I think Will shared a team with him. There's a lot of guys have travelled with him. I think Scott's travelled with him as well from time to time. And he's turned his attention now to, to like the construction industry there. He's just built a full extension on my, on my garage for, for my bikes and for my little gym that I've got set up. And if I have to mark him out of 10, I would probably say it's nine and a half, nine and three quarters. He, he just drops that quarter because he, Spends a lot of time at the Builders Merchant drinking the free coffee and eating the free hot dogs. So, um, but no, he's done a superb job. Him and his boys did a did a great a great extension on the back of the house there. But I don't think he'd like it if you just called him a somebody who what do you call it a 
a dry, he doesn't just do driveways, put it that way. Some of the jobs he's done are pretty spectacular. Yeah, there's a, a certain certain kind of people that just do driveways, but we probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, one for the mechanics now, Danny, is that right? Question for the mechanics now from Chris Riak. He wants to know, once we get to a race, how long does it take to set up everything for the weekend and the truck and all of that sort of thing? And how dramatic or subtle are the changes the mechanics and the riders make to the bikes for each track? Yeah, I mean, you're probably looking three to four hours once we actually get to a, a venue and sort of work out where we, we need to be and we've sort of shuffled Danny's camper in and shuffled the truck around and getting it into position. Um, by the time we've sort of built the pits and pulled everything out of the insides of the truck and fill the water tanks up and empty the toilet. Yeah, it kind of three to four hours, I would say. Um, yeah, it just depends how long we've driven for, really, I guess. Then it takes another day and a half to actually get the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think the record for packing up is about 45 minutes. <laughs> Again, I think Chris Rack also wants to know... Um, how dramatic or subtle are the changes you make to the bike to suit each track? So I think he just wants to get an idea on bikes set up from venue to venue. Once you've got those pits set up in four and a half hours. <laughs> it's To be fair, I mean, out of the box now, the Fox suspension we use is pretty good. Um, we do a little bit of testing before a race in the winter and stuff, and, and we do a test at, at Loser with Fox, getting everything fine-tuned. And from race to race, not a great deal of changes, unless there's massive temperature changes or stuff like that. The, the, the suspension works so well, we don't need to do a lot. The main change happens from the first day of practice, really. So first few runs are generally a little bit, I want to say like a little bit, not slow on the bike, but slower than they were when the last rode the bike. So the last, the, the last rode the bike in a race run, so they were going as fast as they possibly can. Uh, at the start of the day, but then by the end of the day, come qualifying, the bike is pretty much where it was at the week before for race run. So we'll see what happens. Um, I know you've only had a few uh, a few rides on them really before we got locked down. But any any feelings from you really on that new suspension? I know I know there's been some some changes and there's some refinement that's that's made all the difference with that stuff. Now it's it's made a good product, you know, absolutely fantastic. What we can see. So. Um, has that translated to, to you guys so far on the on the few rides you've had? Um, yeah, for me, I can definitely feel the you know the refinement and the the work that the guys at Fox have put into their into their suspension, and I, I think the the stuff we're riding on at the minute, the new 2021 products, are, are the best quality stuff I've I've ever used uh, so far in my career. That's for sure. Um, when we were out at Fox test, actually, the weather wasn't the best, so. It was quite hard to feel the differences between uh, the last year's product and this. But um, now I've had some time on the bike at home and riding some tracks that I know. And I, I can just jump on my bike and ride fast on. I'm confident on. You can really tell the differences between. And the new stuff definitely feels more sensitive. And you can just charge into the bumps a lot better. And it just the, the bike just soaks it up a lot better. So, um, yeah, I'm just I'm happy to be riding all the new stuff. And... Just a shame we can't go racing because it, it works so well. I'm excited to go and run my bike. The new fork and shock's been absolutely amazing. The new shock, what I put on last year was around one St. Anne and it was, it was life-changing. So I was really looking forward to going racing on the more, the more production-based stuff that was more redefined again. But due to circumstances we're in, that hasn't been possible. But I'm definitely excited to go racing with, with the new stuff. Uh, you and I think you've got one there from Danny Casoli, is that right? Yeah, so Danny wants to know how are overseas races planned and organised for the team? So I guess that, that's to you, that one, Will. Right back at me, yeah. Um, well, well, we'll get the race schedule, certainly for the World Cup, say July, August, the year before. So I'll start looking at venues and flights and travel right from then, really. So we start by putting a team planner together of what days the the truck will travel what day the riders will fly out or what days they will start traveling and then when we'll arrive uh you know hire cars everything else just everything that goes with it is planned for for each race probably 
six to you know eight nine months in advance um and then obviously at the moment i've got the opposite scenario i'm 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 cancelling and getting refunds for races one by one at the moment, which is quite a sad thing to be doing after all the preparation. But um, yeah, everything's staying in place as much as it can be for those races to come up. And we've just got to hope that eventually you know, we, we maybe do get to go racing this year. So we've just got to wait and see. Ian Wilkie wants to know, at what age did the current team members start racing downhill? And do you feel that it's easily accessible for kids looking to enter the sport these days? So Matt, that's a good one for you. I think you're the... You've done that most recently out of all of us, sort of got into the sport and progressed through it. Do you, how do you feel that it is nowadays holding down and racing? I think as a whole, it's, um, it's pretty easy to get into. Um, yeah, I didn't start that long ago. I guess the, I think it was the January of 2012. I first did my first downhill race. So, but yeah, to be honest, I find it quite easy to get into. There's a, a good mini downhill series at the Forest of Dean, and they run a summer series and a winter series. So um, that's where I did my first race. I know a lot of a lot of people my age and a couple of years older started there as well. Um, they also do a, a rippers category, so that's from kids from 10 to 12 years old. So they can get a couple of years of racing under their belts before they go to the bigger tracks at, and at nationals and so on. So um, yeah, I think it's it's pretty accessible and yeah, it's good. Sounds good, Danny. I think you um, when you started downhill racing, you you started a year early. Is that right? You um, you had to get special permission from British Cycling. Yeah, so I raced downhill from probably I think I was eleven years old. I was actually two years too young at the time to race, but I'd been racing BMX and I wasn't like coming from nothing, so. British Cycling actually came and did like a, they like examined me riding to see if I was safe enough. It was actually in Aleth and along, well, like I said, I'll have been probably 11 years old and you're not meant to race until you're 13. So yeah, I started a couple of years earlier than, than was like allowed at the time. But yeah, I definitely think now the times have changed and there is the the small, the smaller races for the younger kids, like Matt was saying, the the mini downhill series, and and the bikes now are catered for younger kids and smaller, smaller ones. So yeah, it's definitely a lot easier now than it was back when I first started. Yeah, I think you're right. I definitely think you're right. Which is which is really good to see. We've made that progression and made it easy for people to get involved. So I think that's cool. Scott, I um, got a good one from Dean Bryce, and he wants to know. What's the quickest Danny's managed to break a component that you have literally just fixed or replaced? This one would have to be probably left hand brake lever, rear brake lever. Um, he seems to like the crash and left hand turns quite a bit, so it is more user error. Pretty much done it half a turn into Maribor. Um, but nah, that's, he's, he's not too bad on components, to be fair. He's, he's pretty good, he's consistent, he's very good at getting faster as the day goes on not push yourself too far so he isn't too bad he's good to work for anyways oh Danny Matt Andrews what do you look for when you're track walking at a World Cup I think for the World Cups mainly we've usually been to them all so we have a good idea of, of where the track goes but we'll obviously just clarify that that's where it goes and we see how they've taped it see if you can go high there or open a corner up here and things like that. And then I often try to figure out where the split times are going to be because I section it down in the, in training sometimes. And then, yeah, just generally to see where they've taped it and and what we've got to deal with. And then after a qualifying run on a Friday or a Saturday, then I will go and walk it to have a look and see if there's any lines that I've missed or see whether there's a smoother line or see what I can change. But like if we're talking about a normal like amateur racer who's just going to race on the weekend and they might have to walk it on a Saturday morning before training or if you can get there on a Friday night, you can walk it. But you've just got to walk it to see what, what's coming up and have a brief idea of where you're going to put your wheels when you practice. It's important not to get too hung up on it. And if you're missing things when you're riding, just just don't get too stressed about it and just try and figure it out as the day goes by. 
Okay, that's great. Thanks for that, boys. I think that's all the questions for this week. We're just going to have a little bit of fun to finish. Um, listen carefully, everybody. We've got a quick fire quiz now for you. Coach Dixie's going to play quiz master. Um, and then if everybody gets their answers in on the comments on our YouTube channel, we'll find a prize. And the first person on the comments to get them all right will uh, will win a prize. Okay, Dixie, over to you. Uh, Ten questions. Okay, question number one. Who is the heaviest member of the Madison Saracen factory racing team? Question number two. How many national titles does the whole team have as a collective? So how many? Question number three. Who makes the best brew on a World Cup race weekend in the team? Question number four. Who snores the loudest on the team and who is the person that nobody wants to share with in the hotel? Question number five. How many miles has Ewan done on his wife's Swift account? <laughs> Question number six. How many years has Matt Walker been on the Madison Saracen factory racing team? Question number seven. How many World Cup wins and World Championship titles has Danny and Matt got all together? Question number eight. How many sponsors do we have as a team? What is the total number of sponsors we have for 2020 as a team? Question number nine. How many race wins did we get as a team in 2019? And question number 10. What is Danny Hart's time for a 5K run? Have a think about those questions and get your answers on the comments on our YouTube channel and uh, we'll find a prize for the first person to get all of those right. That's about it from us for now. Hope you've enjoyed it. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. Uh, and I hope this nightmare ends soon. That's the coronavirus, not this podcast. Man, I really want to go bike racing. Bye for now. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Who's my heart? <laughs> yeah, who's Matt Hart? <laughs> Who said Matt Hart? You. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no.